and good morning beautiful people you know what time it is it is tea time The New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault invites you to join us on Saturday, May 7th in Asbury Park for our 6th Annual Sexual Assault Awareness Month 5K. For more information, please visit www.njcasa.org. Hello, hello, and welcome to our show, Conversations with Lady T, where we bring guests on our show to talk about issues and topics that matter. Today, we have a new segment, Positive Black Images. The purpose of the show is I saw too many negative images in the media, reality shows, portraying the black culture in such a negative light. So the show is going to highlight all the positiveness, the beauty, all the great things that we are doing in the community and how we're raising our families and just becoming successes. So today our family is the Agadoses and they're gonna to talk to you about how they've raised their kids. Now that they're in college, you'll see that what they've done is amazing. My name is Hester Agadosi. I am 53 years old. I'm an attorney. I work for the state. I have three beautiful children. Our oldest, Justin, is 20 and he's a junior at Hampton University. I have a daughter, Jade. She's 19 years old and she is a sophomore at Howard University. And then my youngest, who you'll meet as well, Jordan, is a junior. He's 16, he's a junior at um, Immaculata High School. I'm, I'm Paul B. Yossi. I'm an architect by profession. I'm about 54 years old, but my birthday was actually last uh, January. Um, I've been practicing architect, I've been practicing for about 30 years, and I welcome the opportunity to uh, express and to explore and to discuss the subject matter. Wonderful. Hello world, I am Mama Fran, affectionately known as Mama Fran. But in actuality, in addition to that, I'm Hester Agadosi's mom. I'm 75 years old. And gorgeous. Happy, pleased to still be on the planet. And keeping my life and everything else in my life very real. I am blessed. I actually live here with the family and it has really been not only inspiring, it's just been awesome to watch my grandkids grow up right before my eyes and I can see today as I speak with you that they have nothing except positive images to bring into their future which of course or have to enhance the rest of the world and the community that they are living in. So I'm going to pour some tea. So I figured, okay. you know, this is a beautiful topic. I know your husband is African. I, of course, brought some South African honey bush tea. Oh, oh, so I'm going to pour a little tea for you guys. A little bit of tea for three. <laughs> well, I can tell you um, that's something that you picked up on. My husband is from Nigeria and I'm from here, um, born in Brooklyn, raised on Long Island. So for us, family really has been bridging two cultures. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we need to be aware of when we talk about black people in America is that we're not monolithic. Um, you represent the Caribbean. Yes. I represent, you know, the, my roots come from the South here in this country. My husband comes from Nigeria, so although we all, you know, present as black people, there's a multiplicity and richness in just our cultural upbringing. Right. Um, so I think one of the things that, for me, um, was very instructive is the fact that although I'm from here and I grew up, you know, with that southern upbringing, when I met my husband. Um, although he's from Nigeria, I found the same values. Right. Um, and even with you, Sharon, I think that when you look at people, it's not so much where they come from, right. but exactly. it's really what are the value systems. 
and if the value systems are, are similar in terms of, you know, you, you, you want to strive to get a good education, you want to strive to be able to, you know, um, do for your children, you want to strive to be able to, to give to your community, you have a sense of responsibility about your family right. and others around you. You know, those are the things that are the essence of, of an individual. Being from Nigeria, um, education is very, very important. All family, all family members have to go to university. That's a, a must. It's a, it's a non -starter. So that's first. So my idea of um, having Justin Jade and Jordan go to school was uh, just like a typical immigrant Nigerian in particular. I want them to go to Ivy League school. Right. You know, they gotta go to the best. They, you know, I always stress to them that you can do and excel as anybody else. So my idea of them going to college was to go to, you know, one of the premier and uh, really Ivy League schools mm -hmm. and things like that. But along the way, you know, um, it did not work out that way. Right. And I'm very, very, very happy okay. at the way it turned out. Right. Because each of them um, went exactly to the school that's best suited for them. Right, that's true. Yeah. Jade, uh, my daughter, is very outgoing, more into communication, more into public radio and all that, mm -hmm. TV. So now she's studying um, communication at Howard mm -hmm. University. Yes. Right in a big city. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the type of stuff that she likes to do. Mm -hmm. Jordan, on the other hand, just, yes, I mean, Justin, on the <laughs> other hand, it's a um, you know, very um, result and really knows more business oriented. Right. Really, really business oriented. So going to Hampton University to study business was just perfect for him. Mm -hmm. And it's such an exceptional school mm -hmm. that when I look back at it now, I say, wow, what a difference from what I had in mind and my <laughs> vision and where they are now. Not only are they excelling academically there, mm -hmm. but I know the passion that the professors and the school themselves, you know, pay attention to them. What they bring to the table is just unmatched. Yeah. Yeah. So I see that as a professional, I feel that I'm an architect and I, you know, not too many African Americans are in that field. Right. So sure. I deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So to know that they are in an environment that really stresses their ability to excel mm -hmm. and their ability to push themselves and go beyond the baseline requirement is really a very um, exciting right, it is. Uh, to me. Yeah, that's very exciting. <laughs> For both, I went to University of Notre Dame undergrad. Love, go Irish. <laughs> and, and love that, love that experience. Um, my husband went to the University of Southwestern Louisiana. But um, having said that, we we're blessed. We live in North Brunswick. And North Brunswick is one of the most diverse communities that you can I agree. Um, and we would tell our children that, you know, listen, when you go out into the world, it's not necessarily going to, although the world is diverse, you know, in terms of actually being in a mix where you have this level of diversity, this is really a moment in time. I mean, their school, if you look at the, the demographics of their school, um, it's a quarter North, North, Brunch, North Brunswick, excuse me, um, public school system. It's a quarter African American, yes. a quarter Hispanic, a quarter white, and a quarter Asian. Yes. And I mean, where do you find that? Right. Um, and so it was a blessing for them to be able to be in that type of environment. I would like to elaborate a little bit more, excuse me, on what Esther just said in terms of the diversity here in North Brunswick. You could just pop up anytime you would like. And if Justin Agadosi is here, his cadre of friends really represent a smaller version of the United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> he has friends that are like brothers to him that literally, physically represent Hispanic, Caucasian, from Guam, mm. from England, all the countries just about that he could amass. Right, right. And they actually enjoy 
being with each other. And Phil and I would imagine the way they act when they get a chance to interact together. Like they are really blood kin. You see absolutely nothing different in any of these kids. They are all intelligent. They are a pleasure to be around. They have none of the outside rhetoric it doesn't seem to be in their lives. They are who they are. They represent themselves very well. I'm so impressed until I call them all, and they know it. My little UN, okay. and they call me Mama Fran, right. just like Justin, Jordan, and right. Jay. So I think what I have learned, and unfortunately, most of us have not had the ability to learn, people are still people exactly. first and foremost. Yeah. We all have our successes, we all have our little bumps in the road, mm -hmm. but basically, we're all human beings. Right. Right. And that's, that's I am just so impressed that this younger generation does not have, just doesn't seem to have, that stereotypical type of thinking. Right. And that alone, to me, speaks volumes, mm -hmm. because I was raised in the South, and it was a whole different world, yeah. totally. Yeah. So I thank God more than anything for at least letting me be able to experience a whole different side of life. It's truly been a blessing. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to piggyback and say that my mom is really the glue. Mm -hmm. She's the one that takes the kids on you know, their errands. She's the one that takes them to their after school activities. Um, you know, like I said, I thought when, when they were younger that I really needed the help. But I can tell you that not only is she such a big help and instrumental in that way, but when she was talking about Justin's friends, everyone from the school to his friends, my children's friends, they know her as Mother Fran because she really is that, that staple. So it's such a blessing. We've really been blessed with wonderful people. Right. And my children have had wonderful role models. And I think that's important in terms of, you know, when you want to raise your, your family, the images that they have around them. And so I couldn't ask for, you know, to be in more fertile ground in terms of the opportunities and the people that they've been surrounded by. So, um, and that was very important for me. I wanted to make sure that it was intentional. And you'll know, I mean, we, 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 we met because when my daughter was turning 13, I wanted to have a ceremony, kind of a, a rite of passage right. ceremony. And I selected women that would be mentors to her in different areas of her life. And you have 13 mentors. Yes. I had 13 <laughs> mentors. I thought at that time, 13 mentors, oh my God. But after that event that you did for her, I realized the importance of every one of them. Right. Every I, aspect of life. I wanted it to I wanted a mentor for you know spirituality, mm -hmm. academics, the arts, politics, mm -hmm. you know, all those areas, you know, cooking, um, style, all those those areas that impact you as a person. And I wanted to be intentional. Uh, as I say I did that with my daughter, um, but in essence, that was something that's always been conscious mm -hmm. to me for all of my children, right. for them to, to have, to see themselves right. um, through others. An example of, you know, of them understanding that they can, they can do whatever they want to do, right. as long as they apply themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Jade actually ended up being the homecoming queen. Oh, beautiful. You know, which <laughs> will take a whole diverse group of people to vote her to become them. Right, right. And uh, Justin, actually went and represented uh, the accounting KPMG. Uh, no, not even KPMG, the accounting oh, uh, DECA oh, wow. for high for nice. North Brunswick competed in national as well yeah. as you know international competition for that. So you know and it kind of gave them the idea that you know they can do anything, they can compete. And also as part of as, as part of the program uh, Justin was part of the leadership youth council in Washington. Yeah. that they went to. Uh -huh. And these programs uh, allowed them to stay away for weeks, four weeks, nice. and kind of do things on their own. So that kind of built yeah. them up. Yeah. 
and, and he's very, very, um, you know, unlike here. When I was growing up in Nigeria, we thought, you know, during the high school, we all go to boarding school. Right, okay. So you're in no. boarding school, you're away from your family, right. you're able to, you know, do things your own. Right. I mean, that, that was a base. So you go to, you go, you live on, on you know, on campus. Right. Uh, you are young, you know, elementary, you know, right. high school. Yes. So you wake up every morning, you get a, you know, you have your schedules to meet. Go to prayers in the morning and then go to assembly. And then they give you provisions and they give you money to last you for the month. Right. So you manage that. Because you know your parents are not close by. If you if they give you your provision money and you finish it in a week, then uh, for the rest of the semester you are by yourself. Right. So you gotta learn how to manage what it, what you are. So that is very very critical. It's right. missing in this culture now mm-hmm. because of you, know, you have to have really a lot of money in order to be sent yes. to boarding school. But then growing up, that was the baseline. Wow. So which which was which is missing in this in this environment, and that really helped me. Um, when I think of it, mm-hmm. because we have to wake up early in the morning to go to your shower so you can be in assembly by like, you know, early. So that gets you going. We do a lot of work with the kids. We the ones first Baptist Church of Lincoln yes. Gardens. Beautiful um, they had, Yes, and they had <laughs> wonderful it. programs. Yeah. Um, my daughter was involved in the dance at Inspire Us. So those things, as much as, as you as a parent, um, bring something to the table and it's important also you know as we talked about other people that you surround your children with but also having the benefit of organizations and I I say that and I speak strongly about that because I have friends that are not from here who have children our age and that's not a given and that's something that you know speaking to them is lacking and something that they're looking for you know how do i direct my children particularly when they're in that that high school you know middle school high school age where it's not always i tell you to do this right and they <laughs> that just blanketly do it doesn't always work. right it doesn't always yeah. work so it's always great when you can have people from the outside who aren't you but are speaking the same you know that's what we talk about balance right you know people have the same values who want the same thing so if you have your children involved in organizations around people who have the same values who are instilling in them the same things unbeknownst to them they're still being you know guided in that direction and so i I can't speak enough of the, the i feel the importance of that so he sees himself being right. that yeah. file and everything, right? Yeah. Talk about that, John. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about you know. Yeah, what, what's your passion with the football? Um, I, mean, I love football. I love playing it. Uh, it's, I, it's just a great game. It's fun. Okay. So tell us some things that you, you know, admire about your parents. Um, they are really, really hard workers, and they always uh, try and provide the best for me. Like, for example, allowing me to go to Immaculata um, costs a lot of money, but they work hard and they made sacrifices for me to come, and it's a fan home. Wonderful. I'm so proud of you because this was intentional. Mm-hmm. You put yourself in a position, right. you took yourself out of an environment where you didn't see yourself thriving. You intentionally put yourself at Immaculata, not only because it would help you academically, but because it also allowed you to be able to pursue football. Right. And as a result of that, you know, now you're in a position where you have this opportunity. And let me tell you, he was <laughs> grinning like the che- Cheshire cat. I mean, he was there because it was just, you know, and we were as well in terms of just the, the, the opportunities and and what they said about the program. Right. So to me, I wanted to just reinforce yeah. with them that, you know, these things are purposeful and intentional. It's how you direct your life, exactly. how you position yourself. Yeah, it, it takes parents, you know, understanding their role. Yes. And not just trying to be friends. Right. And, you know, just to, you know, tell them like it is. They, not know, about they may not like it, they may not like it, but in the long run, it, they will come yeah. to, their senses and understand that you have their best Right, that's what it's all about. They don't realize it at the time. Yeah. Right. You know, I know I didn't sometimes either, but it's always about our best interest. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we, we were once their age, right. and we'll 
probably maybe the same way of doing the same way than the other one. Right, exactly. But the only benefit now with, with years of experience, we haven't done this for now, though, okay, it would be good to do X, but you know, think of you know Y, think of you know delayed gratification. Yes. Because that's that's very uh, informative for you know um, um, people mm -hmm. in terms of trying to plan life as right. opposed to yeah. living life everything for now. Exactly. Because um, I mean, the, what Hesha just indicated is one of the things that I try to stress to the children mm -hmm. now. You know, it's a means to an end. Right. Sometimes you have to understand what that means, which is, I have to do this now, I have to suffer through this now, because down the line, this is yes. what's going to happen. The problem with society today is everybody wants it now. Right. So, Jay and Justin, tell us a little bit about school. What are you doing now in school? Let us hear some of those questions that you're doing. I decided to go to Howard University because they gave me a scholarship. And at first I was really, really nervous about it because I didn't know if Howard was gonna be the right choice for me. Um, I, at first I had in my mind, oh, I'm going to Spelman. I'm going to Spelman, I wanna go there, visited the school, loved my experience. So I said, okay, well, if I go to Howard, it'll be cool, but I don't know if it's gonna be all that. And so then we went, it was a four day, um, it was a four day trip to Howard University where we got to experience student life. Um, so it was one weekend that we went, and it was with the New Jersey Club. And that experience alone really, really kind of propelled me to um, to really wanting to go to Howard. Although I had already had in my mind that I was going to go there because of the finances and the financial situation um, and the uh, scholarship that they provided me with, but I think that that experience of being able to be amongst the students and feel like I was in a home environment that was filled with, like, a lot of different young black people really doing something and it just felt like home it felt comfortable so Howard was definitely the right choice and I still love it to this day they all did a great job of influencing me in the different facets of my life but um, if I had to pinpoint one thing to each person I'd say um, for my mom she taught me how to think critically but also concisely being that she is a lawyer I had to make sure that when I, whenever I was discussing things with her and I wanted to do something, I had to make sure that the information I presented was um, both factual, it contained a lot of content, but it was also given in a form where it was concise enough to get the job done and still keep her attention. So I do, she did influence me on the way that I carried myself in that department. Um, for my dad, he really influenced me in showing me um, how to dream. When, it, when I think about my dad's story coming from Nigeria and um, working hard to make sure that he has an education, comes to America, then becomes a principal of a firm, and now he started his own. All of that all started from him really having a dream and just following suit and making sure he was prepared to do that work. So he showed me um, that. For my grandparents, my um, grandmother showed me the importance of networking and how you can really benefit, um, and how much you can re power there is in really speaking to people, getting to know them, and then asking for a favor. Because you'd be surprised what people are willing to do for you after they realize how genuine of a person you are. My parents um, were a major influence on me growing up. I feel like a lot of the values and a lot of the um, just the life lessons that they've instilled in me have really carried on. I know um, when I was younger, I was raised in the church, brought up, you know, very um, active, very religious, spiritually involved, and also my parents really stressed, stressed the value of education and, um, you know, the importance of reading, writing, and just um, seeking knowledge as much as possible. As a child, did I feel like my parents were hard on me? I could easily answer that yes, <laughs> 10 times yes because I feel like it was harder for me more so than my siblings because of the fact that I was the oldest. So a lot of the, the things that they were able to do, I was the one that had to break those barriers and allow that to be done. I remember um, being younger and coming up with a PowerPoint presentation about like how I should push, my, how my bedtime should be later and how I could still get eight hours and like backing it up with information about my grades. So that's just like one example from like when I was like, what, elementary school, but um, even like throughout other parts of my life, like I always had to make sure that I presented my case well and it showed them that I really cared, not only just cared about it, but that I brought up information to support what I was saying in order to win them over. 
So they, they were hard on me, but because of it, I can say that it helped me to think and to make sure that when I present my arguments to show how much I care about something and to also back it up with information. Now looking back at it, I really appreciate all of the extra push that they um, really provided me with, but at the same time, at the moment, it seemed like they were being too hard on me. Like, I thought, oh, like all the other kids are able to do this or all the other kids can do that. But I think um, now looking back at it, like I said, I can see that difference, but I can also see the value in what my parents did. I really appreciate um, them really pushing me um, to be a program with. that impacted my life more than um, any other. I'd have to say that it was my high school program of DECA because that was the first time where I was competing on a national scale, or well, first regional, and I placed there and I realized that, oh, I can like do this. I went on to states and um, it had never been done before in my school to win at a state level, but I won in two events actually at the state level and then went on to go to the national event that was in Anaheim, California that year. One program um, that I was involved in that really um, changed my life, I guess, was um, the Freshman Leadership Academy here at Howard University. I joined last year and it's been an amazing experience. It's uh, definitely about um, leadership, academic enrichment, learning how to um, survive in different leadership um, positions and also just learning how to be versatile. And from that experience, we were able to travel to China. So last summer I went to China, an amazing experience, life-changing experience with amazing people. And as a group of 62, well, a group of 62 black um, youth involved in the program and then having around 30 of us travel to China, it was just like a really amazing experience. I really enjoyed it. That's what I mean. Well, I thank you guys so much. I wanted everyone to see the beautiful black family, the positive things you're doing for yourselves and for your children because, you know, it's, everyone has to see that we are beautiful, positive, confident, and we have a lot to Brilliant. Work, so, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. So, thank you guys. Thank Until you. next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for having yes. us. My name is Obi Agadosi. I'm the president and CEO of OCA Architects. I have over 30 years experience in the field of architecture. At OCA, we strive to provide maximum value to our clients through effective project management. We are located at 211 Warren Street, Newark, New Jersey. Our phone number is 973-732-0656.